Hello and welcome. So this is a question that's going to deal with hysteresis, uh, taken from, uh, it's borrowed from, uh, Mankiw's Macroeconomics, 8th edition, chapter 14. That's the chapter on aggregate supply and the trade-off between inflation and unemployment chapter. Um, if you happen to use a different edition, it's usually a different chapter number. Um, in this problem, this problem has to do with hysteresis. So hysteresis is like uh, how short-term cyclical unemployment affects the long-term natural rate of unemployment. So, uh, you know, for most of intermediate macroeconomics courses, we assume this kind of concept of a natural rate of. So the natural rate of unemployment, uh, the natural rate of GDP, which is, I guess, potential GDP, um, and maybe some natural rate of, you know, uh, interest rates uh, and so forth. So uh, this is done for a number of reasons, you know, not least of which uh, it's easier to understand. It's easier to deal with mathematically, as we'll see with this problem when we deviate from the rule. And... Uh, the natural rate hypothesis allows us to discuss short-term versus long-term uh, separately, uh, and it's a handy tool to link between the two. So uh, note that uh, short-term demand and supply probably do affect long-run in at least some ways. So how might short-run demand affect long-run? Um, a quick example would be uh, take unemployment and short-run unemployment. Suppose a bunch of workers with a particular skill lose their job and they can't find work in a particular industry for many, many years. So there's a decent chance that that you know many years of unemployment is actually going to lead them to lose some skills and affect their long-term productivity, right? So in this way, short-run unemployment may affect an economy's long-run productive potential. Uh, and then it might work in the other direction. So it might work the same way with unemployment above the natural rate. If you can get workers into jobs now, acquiring skills and experience along the way, this might lead to a higher potential GDP in the long run. Um, there's certainly, you know, probably problems with this line of thinking, but there's also likely to be some truth. So let's get to the actual nitty gritty of the problem. First off, suppose that the economy has this Phillips curve. So this is a pretty regular, typical, simple Phillips curve. Inflation today is equal to inflation yesterday. We add a little subscript there. Inflation uh, today is equal to inflation yesterday, which is kind of a stand-in for expected inflation, minus uh, the deviation between unemployment today uh, and then the natural rate of unemployment. Uh, usually, you know, the natural rate hypothesis, this is just a U to the N, uh, and it's like a fixed number that's constant through time, right? But in this problem, what we're going to do is set the natural rate of unemployment as something that evolves through time. So the natural rate of unemployment is going to be given by the average of the past two years. So unemployment rate today at time t is equal to the unemployment rate, sorry, the natural rate of unemployment today is equal to the average of um, yesterday's unemployment and the day before's unemployment. So it's the average of the past two periods unemployment rate. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Why might the natural rate of unemployment depend on recent unemployment, uh, as assumed in the preceding equation? So we kind of discussed that at the very beginning. This is the concept of hysteresis. So this is the concept of how uh, short-term deviations in either output or unemployment might actually affect the natural rate, like long-term levels. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm going to say I just answered that already. Um, for part B, suppose that the Fed follows a policy to permanently reduce inflation rate by one percentage point. Uh, what effect will this policy have on the unemployment rate over time? So let's start off with at time t, at like some starting point. I'm going to call time t. So uh, it says the Fed, suppose that the Fed uh, follows a policy to permanently reduce the inflation rate by one percentage point. So what we're saying is that the Fed has this policy. They want today's inflation minus yesterday's inflation to be negative one. The change in inflation, you know, we want to reduce inflation by negative one. Okay, straightforward. Next off, let's kind of rewrite the Phillips curve equation. So this is what we've been given for the Phillips curve equation, right? Today's inflation is equal to yesterday's minus uh, this term, which is the deviation between current and uh, natural rate of unemployment. So let's kind of rewrite it so that we uh, bring this yesterday's inflation to the other side. So now we have the change in inflation is equal to um, this term here. So um, we have a policy goal now to make this to be negative one. So plugging that in, we get the following. Um, negative one is going to be equal to the following term here. So the question is, what do we need to set? What does the government, the Fed, need to set unemployment rate equal to in order to achieve that policy goal of a negative one, you know, a drop in the inflation rate of one? So uh, let's do what we normally do and just solve for uh, the current unemployment rate. 
So the first step here is um, you know negative one divided by negative one half. Negative one divided by negative one half is just two. And then on the right hand side here, negative one half divided by negative one half, you know that just cancels out. So we have the current unemployment rate minus the natural rate of unemployment rate is equal to two. And so finally, we have that uh, in order to achieve this policy goal of reducing inflation by one, we need to set the unemployment rate equal to the natural rate of unemployment plus two. But there's kind of a big caveat here. Remember the natural rate of unemployment evolves through time too. We were given this second equation up here that describes how the natural rate of unemployment evolves through time. Um, so for this next stage here, I'm just going to kind of assume that up to this point, you know, up to time t, so like for all periods before time t, so t minus 1, t minus 2, t minus 3, blah, 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 blah. All those times before, the natural rate of unemployment was this number, uh, the natural rate of unemployment at time t. So this is just some number, and it's always been that number. It could be 0, it could be 0.1, it could be 2%, so forth. But it was some number, and it was always that number before. So that tells us that the natural rate of unemployment at time t is equal to the average of you know whatever that number was through time. So it's this. So what does this tell us? It tells us that in order to achieve that policy goal of reducing inflation by one percent, the Fed needs to set uh, needs to somehow get the unemployment rate to be the initial natural rate of unemployment rate plus two percentage points. So they have to somehow drive up unemployment by two percentage points. Awesome. So that's a pretty typical story, right? You know, uh, usually when we wanted to decrease inflation, we always had to somehow drive up unemployment to get that to happen. Um, but now, you know, the, the changes in this hysteresis. So let's see how this evolves through time. So let's go to time t plus one, the very next period. First off, let's find the new natural rate of unemployment, right? We have this equation right here that says that the natural rate of unemployment at time t plus one is going to be the average of the previous two unemployment rates. So let's plug in the previous two unemployment rates uh, at time, the unemployment rate um, at time, yet UT is the thing we just found up here. So that's the natural rate of unemployment plus two. So that's here, two plus the natural rate of unemployment. And what was the unemployment rate before that? Well, remember I said by assumption at all times before T, you know, so that's T minus one, T minus two, blah, blah, blah that the unemployment rate was just that natural rate of unemployment, just this this number there, right? It's kind of like a, uh, a little comparison point for us. So the new natural rate of unemployment is the average of those previous two periods. So simplifying things a little bit, we get uh, the following. The new natural rate of unemployment is that initial starting off point plus one additional percentage points. And now this is a pretty big deviation from what we've done in the past. Remember, in the past, we've always had this natural rate of unemployment, and it was just some number that was constant and always the same through time. For the first time uh, with this hysteresis, uh, we now have a new natural rate of unemployment that's higher than it was before, which is really weird. So um, this tells us that the new natural rate of unemployment, you know, the, in the next period or so, the next year, the next month or something, is 1% higher than the natural rate of unemployment in the previous period. Okay, so now let's find the new unemployment rate. That's what we're going to do here. So in the next period, we want to in keep inflation constant. You know, that's a typical policy goal. How do we keep inflation constant? Well, we make it so that the change um, from this period to the next inflation is equal to zero. So at time t plus one, the inflation rate at time, you know, this is just the Phillips curve uh, with the new time subscripts. So inflation today is equal to inflation yesterday minus this term here. So we want inflation today minus inflation yesterday to be equal to zero. So let's find the unemployment rate that achieves that goal. So solving through this, we get um, the in, uh, unemployment rate at time t plus one is going to be just equal to, in order to achieve that, we need this thing to go to zero. So the unemployment rate at time t plus one is equal to the natural rate of unemployment at time t plus one, which we found up here to be that initial natural rate of unemployment plus one. So this is a little crazy. Remember, uh, in previous problems where we wanted to reduce inflation, uh, we were able to, you know, we increased unemployment one period, but then it got to go back to the natural rate after that. Here, however, if we wanted to decrease inflation by 1%, one period, we're finding that unemployment now is, is permanent, seems to be permanently above. It's above what it was before, which is kind of odd. So let's jump to period uh, T plus one and see what happens. 
So next period, uh, you know, we're starting to follow a little cycle here. First thing we do at time t plus one is find the new natural rate of unemployment. So at time t plus two here, the new natural rate of unemployment is the average of the previous two periods unemployment rates. So that's the uh, yesterday's unemployment plus two days ago's unemployment. So plugging in the numbers we have for that, you know, we calculated those just above. So the unemployment yesterday was that initial natural rate of unemployment plus one, and then the unemployment rate at time t was the natural rate of unemployment plus two. So uh, you know, simplifying this, we find that the new natural rate of unemployment, the natural rate of unemployment at this new time period, is that initial starting off point plus 1.5. Um, and then the new, you know, uh, the new uh, unemployment rate is just going to be um, equal to the natural rate of unemployment rate at this period. So it's that initial starting off plus starting off point plus 1.5. Um, if we carry on with this through time we actually get the following. I made a little table for y'all. There's some math there. We get this as, a, as what happens. So uh, the first, this is uh, time here. So you have, you know, time t, that's where we have our little policy intervention. We had all the periods before that, time t minus one, time t minus two, etc. And remember I just said kind of by assumption that uh, all periods before t, we just had an unemployment rate equal to this, like, this number, u sub t to the n. So it's some number, it could be zero, it could have been five. It was just some starting off point, some reference point. We have, uh, in this column here, unemployment rates. An unemployment rate is determined by this little equation. Uh, and then in this column here, we have our natural rate of unemployment. And the natural rate of unemployment is determined by this equation. And it's just the average of the previous two periods unemployment rates. So for example, this natural rate of unemployment is just the average of those periods. This natural rate of unemployment is equal to the previous two periods average. This natural rate of unemployment is equal to the previous two periods coming on, going down like that. Um, so starting at, at time t, right, we had our little policy intervention of let's decrease inflation by 1%. So in order to get that to happen, we found out that the unemployment rate had to be 2 plus the, that initial starting off point natural rate of unemployment. Awesome, great, good for us. Okay, but then all periods after that, you know, we just wanted to in decrease inflation by 1% and then stick to that. So all periods after that, we're just trying to keep inflation constant, right? That's our kind of new policy goal after that. So, uh, you know, our new natural rate of unemployment is just the average of the two periods, because it's given by this equation. Um, and our new unemployment rate at time t plus one is just the natural rate of unemployment, because this unemployment rate keeps inflation constant. Carrying on through this, we find that um, unemployment rate, right, the natural rate of unemployment and the unemployment rate is permanently above what it was before, right? We had this level of unemployment, and now at pretty much all periods in the future, it appears to be about 1.333 or so unemployment all periods in the future. In fact, if you So here's a spreadsheet where I just kind of filled it in through through time. You know, in um, you have the plus one, plus one point five, plus one point two five going through time. We have these terms here. So at time t, we have the unemployment rate going through time, the natural rate of unemployment going through time. What we find is that um, you start off at zero, and then you have the policy intervention. It jumps up to two percent, jumps down to one percent plus the initial, and then kind of deviates. And it's always about one point three, three uh, percentage points above that initial natural rate of unemployment. You know, even 35 periods in the future, you find that uh, the new unemployment rate is, is always going to be above that initial rate of natural unemployment. So what's that tell us? Well, unemployment rate, uh, you know, is now always above that original natural rate. Um, so thus to reduce inflation by one percentage point, uh, unemployment rises above its original level by, you know, about, on average, 1.33 percentage points for all periods in the future. Part C asks, uh, what is the sacrifice ratio for the economy? Well, remember that the sacrifice ratio is equal to um, how much you have to change GDP in order to achieve your policy goal. So we wanted to decrease inflation by one percentage point. How much do we have to decrease um, GDP? Well, in this case, our sacrifice ratio is basically infinity. Because in order to get a 1% change in um, inflation, what we found is that we have to 
because unemployment rate is now permanently above that original level, we now have uh, GDP is going to have to be permanently uh, below its level. So we have this infinite sacrifice of GDP in order to achieve that uh, one percentage point change in uh, inflation. So the sacrifice ratio is basically infinity or extremely, extremely high. Uh, to reiterate, remember, in order to get inflation down one year with the economy with hysteresis, unemployment needs to be permanently lower. Uh, actually, sorry, unemployment needs to be permanently higher, which implies that GDP must be permanently lower. Um, according, recall Oaken's law. Uh, Oaken's law is for each 1% increase in unemployment, a country's GDP will need to be 2% lower than potential GDP. So if we interpret that you know 1% increase in unemployment as an increase in the natural rate, then GDP will be permanently will permanently need to be lower than potential GDP. So this implies you know an infinite sacrifice ratio, which means that if hysteris hysteresis is present in an economy, it might dramatically change. Uh, our economic intuition. So part D asks, um, what do these equations apply for the short run and long run trade-offs between inflation and unemployment? Well, remember with the natural rate hypothesis, uh, we were able to change inflation um, and with just a short run change in the unemployment rate. However, with hysteresis, hysteresis present in the economy, uh, we find that that short-term change in inflation requires a long-run trade-off of unemployment and GDP to reduce. You know, in order to reduce inflation, unemployment must be permanently above its initial level. Uh, so that's a big, big difference. Um, yeah, hopefully that's that's it for this question. Hopefully it's helpful. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.